and we thank you for Christ being in our midst. We thank you, God. Praise you, God. Praise you. Thank you, God. of your breath upon us, God. Be instilled in you, God. Yes. Touching you, God. Hearing you, God. And seeing you is our desire. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, God. I don't need music to raise my hand. I don't need music to respond to God. I don't need to have a certain person in the pulpit for me to respond to God. I thank you, God, for being God personally in my own life. And I honor you, God, because I know that it is you who has brought me thus far. I honor you, Almighty God, because I know it is you who has kept me all these years. I honor you, Almighty God, because I know that if it had not been for your son, Jesus, in my life, that I would not be here standing today. So therefore, I can lift my hands freely to you. I can cry out to you with my voice. I can cry out to you. Thank you for that. You may be seated, praise team. Let's give our youth a hand. Praise God. Praise you, almighty God. If the enemy had his way, many years I would have been taken out, and I'm aware of that. So um, whenever I get a chance to praise God, it's a privilege for me to do that. And uh, I've grown in my spiritual walk because I've learned to realize, and this is true, because I grew up in a time that, uh, you know, it was dun 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 It got the people going and we praised God and we would praise God all day and that was great and it's had its place. But I do, be I do believe that the greater development in your life in Christ and in God and your love relationship with him is when you can praise God because of just who he is. Right? You may be at home all by yourself, you praise God. You're in the car, you can praise God. See, we've got to get to the place where it's spontaneous on the inside. And because it's spontaneous on the inside, when we come together, it will be spontaneous. I think sometimes we're looking for someone else to work us up. But I can work my own self up because... Amen, saints? you got to work yours because, you know, God's done so much for you. Matter of fact, 
I think God healed somebody this week, didn't he? I think God delivered somebody this week. I think God kept somebody in their right mind this week. That is enough just to praise God in itself. Yes, glory, 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 glory to God. Glory, glory, glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest. Yes. Praise you, almighty God. Yes. We're talking about the life of God. Um, first, before I get started, uh, let me give an honor to my lovely wife, Melinda, over there for who she is. Thank God for her. Thank God that she puts up with me. And that's true. Uh, Bishop stated all the time is that in marriages, you, you know, and let's be honest, sometimes you put up with each other, you know it. Yeah, there's the good days, bad days, and, there's some, and everything's not always peachy in a bed of roses. Come on, talk to me, saints. I thank God that she put up with me, and I just thank God for her being a blessing in my life. I thank God for my uh, son, Jared, over there. Let's give him a hand. And my son, Justin, as well, if he's watching. Justin, hello to you, and um, just thank God for them. My oldest son's graduating in May. Can you believe it? It's been four years from college. Wow. Four years. I, I remember them, uh, him from birth up until now and the hard work that he's put in. And, uh, and my son, Jared, he starts school in the fall. And you don't mind me telling them where you start, son? Or is it too late now? He starts school in the fall at Appalachian State, so let's give him a hand. He'll be a mountaineer. So... Um, Thank God for them, and I really appreciate them. Now, again, Bishop uh, has put a command upon Jason and I, and uh, let's thank God for Bishop and Lady Joyce, one of the most powerful men in the whole wide world. What's wrong, Bishop? Everybody said thank God for technology. Amen. Praise God. Is that better? Yes. Is that much better? Good. All right. Let's give Dennis a hand. Getting back to that, thank God for Bishop Hash. Uh, you know, um, we have one of the most powerful men or men in the whole wide world. He is a man of God. He is a man of God. He is. He's actually, he's a seasoned man of God. And you know, one thing, I, I said this about two years ago, and I hope it happens. You know, Bishop Hash, and I don't say this because he's my son, but he really is an apostle. I mean, because he's my father. <laughs> I'm going to get it. <laughs> But, you know, my dad, he really is an apostle. He is. He's a, he is an apostle. He's not 25 an apostle. He's a seasoned apostle. Thank God for Lady Joyce, my mom. Isn't she looking good over there? Praise God. Yes. Now, are you guys hearing me okay? Are we good? All right. Now, Bishop has given us a command, as I stated, first being the light of God, which and, and Bishop has given us a command. And I think the first thing that um, we talked about or what he talked about was the light of God. And you guys remember Bishop talking about the light. It means revelation. For uh, Jesus is the light of the world. He's a revelation of the world. And uh, God came to give us revelation through Christ. And then Pastor Jason talked about the love of God. And Jason talked uh, about God's love being shared throughout all of creation. And basically what he was saying is to treat others as you would love to be treated. So you have the light of God, which gives us revelation. And the, light, and the love of God tells us how to love one another. Today, I want to talk with you from the topic, the life of God. And this will be a two-part series. In part one, I will address the life of God from, and please catch me on this, 
I will address the life of God from a natural perspective. Next week, I will address the life of God from a spiritual part. So there's two parts to the life of God. There's the natural and there's the spiritual. And you may say, why do I need to know about the life of God? And please, everyone hear me. If we are going to be the sons and daughters in the earth that God spoke of, and spoke of in Genesis 1, 26 through 28, where it says that we are in the image, we are in the image and likeness of God, and it says that we are to be fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue, and have dominion, then we will have to fully understand how it connects to the life of God. It's twofold. It's spiritual and it is also natural. It is spiritual and it is also natural. There are spiritual laws in the earth and there are natural laws in the earth. And what I come to understand about the natural laws, it works for both the saved and the unsaved. It doesn't matter. Now, as for the spiritual law, it's different. But as for the natural law, which I want to talk about today, it works for both the saved and the unsaved. And let me say a prayer. God, I just thank you right now that your spirit is here, that your presence is with us. And I honor you, almighty God, that every man and woman, every boy and girl, they will see Christ in our environment. And I thank you, God, that we will go to another level that you have desired for us as your sons and daughters in the earth. And I thank you, almighty God, that this word shall go forth with authority and power. And more than anything, God, you will be glorified. Jesus will be lifted up and the Holy Spirit will be seen in our midst. And that's what we believe and pray for. And everyone in agreement say amen, amen. and amen. Now, from my studies, I did some uh, research. I looked at Bishop Hash's teachings. I looked at E.W. Kenyon's book. A bishop gave uh, me a book to read and he gave Jason a book to read. I looked at uh, different theologians and I read from Irenaeus, Thomas Aquinas, uh, John Calvin, and even Karl Barth. These are uh, four top theologians. And from the different teachings of each one, I can say that the understanding or the life of God, and please catch this, or the life of God, or the, and some people call this term in the world, they call it the Imago Dei, which means in Latin, the life of God. And this is one thing that they all say, that the life of God is vast. Bishop preaches that the life of God is all around us. It can be seen everywhere. It is throughout the universe. It's throughout the galaxies, the stars, and even the planets. Matter of fact, within our own galaxy, there are billions of planets. And the life of God, it is in each one of us. It is in each continent. So it doesn't matter where you go. If you go to Europe, if you go to Africa, if you go to Asia, you go to Latin America, it doesn't matter. You go to the islands, the life of God is there. And it is in every country. It is in plant life. You see the life of God. I don't know about you all, but I love plants. And you see that I was uh, looking at one of the plants that we have over in the admin building, and I remember how it started out with just a seed, and it was starting to bud, and it, and it bloomed, and it blossomed. That was a message that Bishop preached a long time ago. It started to bud, and it started to bloom, and it started to blossom. And now from that seed, it is grown, and it is just beautiful. Not only is the life of God in plant life, but it also it is also in animal life. God, his, his, his life is within animal life. As a matter of fact, I was thinking about this when I read this, my little dog Monique when I was growing up. My little dog Monique followed me anywhere. Did anybody have a dog like that? That followed you everywhere. And then we had a dog named Jasper. Jared, you can, re you can remember Jasper. Jasper went everywhere. Jasper was my dog. Jasper would get on the bed and Melinda would run him out of the house. Matter of fact, I remember one time because Jasper, were, Jasper was so close to me that Melinda got uh, next to me. And you remember when Jasper growled? Because he was telling her, he's mine. You need to get out of the house. I'll never forget that. And Melinda put her foot down. You, you remember you hopped out of the bed. Jasper looked at you and he took off downstairs. But the life of God, it's in everything. Now, and it's even in human life, the highest order of the life of God on earth. 
and be in the higher order of God's creation in his image and in his likeness, God has given us the natural ability. Now, everybody, I want you to grasp this. Because of the life of God within us, and we are the higher order, we have the ability to intelligently think. We have the ability to imagine. We have the ability to speak. And we have the ability to reason. And I love this. We have the ability to create. God has given each one of us that ability to create. See, as Bishop preached, we can create light instead of darkness in all types of every situation. For example, Harriet Tubman escaped slavery to become a leading abolitionist. She led hundreds of enslaved people to freedom along the route of the Underground Railroad. And see, we were not aware of this, but that was the life of God that caused her to take action. It compelled her to do something from a natural perspective. Yes, the slaves were praying. They were praying for their freedom. But God used her to do something naturally to put in course of action the life of God that would set many people free. With the natural ability given to us by God, we can choose to create love instead of hate towards one another. Basically, we can love, you can love your neighbor as you love yourself. God has given all of us that ability. But the reason men don't do it, they choose to walk in darkness instead of light. All of us, we have the ability to love, but some of us, we just don't want to love. It is the life of God in us. Through the life of God in us, we can daily choose to create life instead of death with our thoughts and ideas. For example, in 1954, Brown versus the Board of Education in Topeka, Kansas, was a landmark United States Supreme Court case in which the court de declared laws establishing separate public schools for blacks and whites, students to be unconstitutional. That was the life of God being established in the earth. From a natural perspective, in Colossians 1.16, put it up on the screen for it, says, For by him all things, for by him were all things created. All things were created that are in heaven and that are in the earth, visible and invisible whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And because we were created by God and for God, we were created to thrive in the earth. So whenever we do anything that is aligning with Scripture naturally, we are creating the life of God in our lives and in the earth. So everyone say with me, say this confession. Say, I am created by God. I am created by say, I am created for God. I am created for God. Therefore, through the power given to me by God, I can conquer the challenges of life. And I can create life that God desires for me. And the life that God desires for all of us. Do you not know that God on the inside of you wants to do something great in the earth? And it's not just something spiritually, but God wants to do something in you that will change this whole world. See, this has nothing to do with whether you are a Christian or not, or whether you are an American or not. Because sometimes we believe that the life of God is only for us, me, myself, and I, but the life of God is for everyone. It is the life of God in each one of us that compels us to keep progressing. And I thank God for that. The life of God in you won't allow you to settle for anything less. The life of God won't allow you to settle for being average. If we have been created by God and for God, average is not acceptable in the kingdom of God. Average is not acceptable in your everyday life. The reason that you are here today is because there was something on the inside of you that was crying for more. And I do believe that it was the life of God. It was the life of God that compelled you. 
It was the life of God that put an unction in you to be here today. It was the life of God for some of you to leave a place that you were in to come to St. Peter's. Because within all of us, there is a cry for something more. And it is the life of God within us. It's the life of God all around us. It's the life of God in humanity. For by him we were created, and for him we were created. Another example, it's the life of God in a natural perspective. It's enabled man to go to the moon. The life of God from another perspective gave us the ability to create advanced electronics. And I think about this all the time. When I look at my cell phone and I look at uh, the capabilities that it is able to do, I don't know about you all, but when I was a kid, I never thought that there would be something like this in the earth. I never thought that man would have the ability to create something like this because in my limited thinking, all I could think of was You guys remember that? In my limited thinking, I didn't know that within me at the moment or even at the time that man has so much of God within him to create possibilities. God has given us all things, and I don't want to get ahead of myself, but this thing is an example of the life of God here within the earth. God has given us the ability to master flight. Do you all remember the Wright brothers? They started out, and I believe it was in the state of North Carolina, wasn't it? Or was it in Ohio? Some people say Ohio. Some people say North Carolina. But it doesn't matter. They started something through the life of God. It was a, a small twin-engine plane or just a small plane. But look at us today. We now have a Boeing 7. 57. Well, it wasn't man who did it in himself. It's the life of God in us from a natural perspective, which gives us the ability to do things on that level. Through the life of God, God has given us the ability to harness fire. And now with fire, we can use it to heat our food to enjoy a delicious meal. Through the life of God on the inside of us, we develop creative writing. Thank God that our writing has gone to another level and we're able to read books. We're able to enjoy someone else's thoughts. Through the life of God, we, we have been able to create music. I don't know about you, but music is a good thing. I love my music because sometimes my music helps me to get over. Well, it was the life of God. It's the life of God within us which gives us the ability to create. And through the life of God, we have been able to create photography. We're able to keep memories. Through the life of God, we have created the Internet. Thank God for the Internet. Amen? Amen. You know, with the Internet nowadays, you can Google almost anything. It doesn't matter what you have a question about. You just type it in, and you get a thousand Who would have ever thought that 100 years ago or 50 years ago that you would be able to sit down at a computer and type something in and get the life of God on the inside of us? Boy, I tell you, just even talking about this right now, do you not know there is so much of the life of God in this building right now that anything can happen in any moment? God has given us the ability to create language. Thank God for all the languages. I think that you all were singing that song. Was it Swahili? Yoruba. It was Yoruba. <laughs> Yoruba, whatever it was. Yoruba. Everybody say you. you. Rabba, whatever. <laughs> whatever it was, it came through the life of God. And we have all of our different languages. In 1 Timothy 6 and 17, it says that God has given us all things to enjoy. Everything that we enjoy comes from God. 
seat that you're sitting in, it has come from God. The lights that we see above us, it has come because of the life of God in the earth. The jewelry that you put on, it has become because of the life of God. Your two-tone shoes that you have on your feet has become before us because of the life of God. The tie that you have on is because of the life of God. The contacts that you wear in your eyes are because of the life of God. The glasses that you're able to put on your eyes so that you can see clearly is because of the life of God. Your peanut butter and jelly sandwich is because he has given us all things. Your cooked bologna that you love. Everything has come out from the breath of God through somebody. And we enjoy it every day. Praise be to God for the life of God. See, man can do nothing within himself. God has made all things possible. I thank God for the bathroom. I thank God that I had water to drink today. I thank God. See, it's through God's love that we enjoy so much. When you go to your restaurant today and you look at that menu, give praise to God because everything that's on that menu came from God. God says, I've come that you may have life and that you may have it more and abundantly. We are enjoying life now, but the next 50 years, 100 years, what will God release in the earth? We've only just begun, saints. I hope I quicken us today to understand God on another level naturally because we're believing God for million dollar ideas. We're believing God for so much in this ministry. Well, I want to tell you, it's on the inside of you. If somebody else can do it, Bishop, guess what? We can do it too. We have got to start believing in God in us. Come on, saints. I've been in this thing a long time. I've traveled with my dad. I've traveled with my mom. And I've seen it. I've seen so much. I've been to different places in the world. And I've seen God in his power. I've seen God in his creation. And I said, God, if they can do it, we can do it too. Man, I can't wait for that first million dollar offer. As a matter of fact, Bishop, I just can't wait. I can't wait. I know you can't wait. I can't wait. Matter of fact, I want to do a praise break. Let's just give praise to God for all the things that we enjoy. Let's just thank him right now. Praise him. Yes. Glory. Yes. Glory. Glory, Tony. Yes. Praise God. Yes. Praise God. Let everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Let everything, let everything, let everything. Let the trees praise God. Let the bread praise, praise God. Let everything. Yes.
you all know this, I was at Maxi B's the other day and I had a piece of chocolate cake and I said, thank you, Jesus. That cake was good, brother. Because I know where it came from. <laughs> Everything comes from God. That's the reason that we praise him. Now, let's look at life from another perspective, or the life of God and the personal life of Jesus. Go with me to John chapter 1 and verse 4. The reason I'm talking about this is because I want us to understand again is that uh, in our life is that there are, again, there's spiritual laws and there's natural laws. Let me share this testimony with you before I get to this. Um, about five years ago, I was laying in bed and um, when I was getting ready to get out of bed, I uh, felt my knee uh, pop, and, um, and I heard my knee pop, but it was very sore as well. And um, in our family, my mom will tell you this, we have rheumatoid arthritis in some parts of our family. And uh, it kind of scared me a little bit because I said, God, what's going on here? And I prayed about it. And do you not know, uh, within two weeks, someone approached me and they said, J.C. Jr., Come join me in a class. And I went with him to this class, and it was tough. But God is my witness. Since I started that class, and it's a class on stretching, God is my witness. I have not had any knee problems since. Amen. Now, the reason I'm talking about this from a natural perspective is because this is what I did. Through my healing, it happened when I got up and went to the class. And because of that healing, I gave praise to God. Now, did it come through someone laying hands on me? No. God used something else to bring my healing. Even though he used something else, he still gets And that's the reason everything became full circle for me. Because I said, God, I understand that your life that you have for us in the earth. Sometimes it will come through a spiritual path or sometimes it may come through a natural. Is this making sense to you guys? Because God sometimes will use natural things to bring about our deliverance. Or sometimes he may use natural things to bring about our healing. But ultimately, he gets the glory again. I just wanted to share that story with you. Now, looking at the life of Jesus Christ, John, in this verse, John saw Jesus live a full life, not just spiritually, but also naturally. In John 1 and 4, it says, In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. Now, when he said in him, who was he talking about? Talk to me, people. Who was he talking about? He says, in him. In him. He was talking about Jesus. John was talking about Jesus because John, if you, if you look at uh, other scriptures in 1 John 1, John said, these things we have seen and these things that we have heard, these things that we have even touched with our hands. John saw Jesus living a full life. In him was life. What was that life? What was the life that John is talking about? In the original Greek, the word life and this verse means Zoe. Go to the next slide. It means Zoe. And the word Zoe, when I studied this, it caught my attention. And I, you know what? I never had seen this before. But in my study, Zoe, it's in the noun, but guess what? It's in the feminine. And I never thought about this until now. I said, God, what you're teaching us, and John was inspired to write this, was that God has given us the ability to give life or to give birth, not just spiritually, but also naturally. That is the Zoe life of God. Go to the next slide. The word Zoe also means and I didn't know this as well. It's not just spiritual, but it means also physical. I've come that you may have life 
not just spiritually, but I want you to have life also naturally in the present world and that which is to come. It speaks of all life throughout the universe. And through it, God shares his gift to all people, not just spiritually, but also naturally. So if the Zoe kind of life is both natural and spiritual, let's look at some areas that Jesus carried out in his life naturally through the life of God in him. And it ties back again to Genesis verses 1, excuse me, Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 through 28. And this is what God said to Adam, and I love this. And I think you all know this. God said this to Adam. God said, Adam, be fruitful. Talk to me. Multiply. Replenish. Subdue. Take dominion or have dominion. And then he said, again, in John 1 and 4, and him was life, and his life is the light of all Mankind, the fruit and the life that he's talking about, it wasn't just spiritually, but it is also naturally. I don't know about you all, but I want to have some money in my pocket too. And it's not about money. I'm going to tell you that, it's not. But I just don't want to be a good Christian who can't afford to pay his bills. Let me go talk to some real people. We can be spiritual all you want. But I've been in this thing long enough. I've seen it. And I said, God, why is it that other people can do some things that we, the household of faith, are not being able to enjoy? Something is wrong with this puzzle. The pieces aren't coming together. Why is it that some people can have a $300 million endowment, but it is hard for us to get $2 million? My boys went to a school, and I would get their books, and they don't know this. I would read this. Their endowment was so large that future generations will benefit from it. If it can happen to them, Why can't it happen to us? I don't believe that we're not praying enough. I don't believe that we're not fasting enough. I believe somewhere on the other side of the equation, we're not putting the two together, the spiritual and. Why is it that some people are enjoying health and some people in the body of Christ are not? Maybe you're not doing something naturally that will put your health into motion. I'm going to use my own ex uh, self as an example. My blood pressure was high at one point, and I went to the doctor. The doctor said, you've got to make some changes. I prayed about it, but I made some changes. And my wife will tell you, the last physical that I had, my blood pressure was perfect. The doctor looked at me, and he said, whatever you're doing, Saints, hear my heart. I love every person here. It's time for us to go to the next level, you all. It is time. We've been praying. We've been fasting. God, send the rain. The rain is already here. Let's start connecting the dots. 
Let's start putting things together so that our children's children can have a better life. Thank you, Bishop. <laughs> Bishop said, you got it. <sighs> I can keep going with this, you know, Bishop. I look at Abraham. God called him to be the father of a multitude of nations, and this wasn't even in my notes. But it wasn't until Abraham got up. From where he was and started to move. Some of you, God's called you to do great things. It's time for you to get up and do something. Stop waiting on God. God is actually waiting on you. Be the Harriet Tubman. Until you put some things into motion, God can't, he can't do something. Jesus showed us that there are natural and spiritual laws in the universe. And the laws, they work for everyone. Jesus showed us that one, look at this right here. Go to the slide. And this is something that John saw. Jesus saw that God made us social creatures. Do you not know that God made us to relate with one another? God made us to collaborate with one another. In John 15, 15, Jesus told his disciples, no longer do I call you servants, but I call you friends. In Matthew 21 and 3, before his crucifixion, Jesus told the disciples to go to a certain place and tell the person that I have need of a donkey. They released the donkey to the disciples. When I read this, evidently, Jesus had connections with this person. God created us to connect. You need to understand that. Number two, God made man to work and to have purpose. Matthew 12, 18. Here in my servant, here is my servant whom I have chosen, my beloved and whom my soul delights. I will put my spirit on him and he will he will proclaim justice to the world. What Jesus wanted them to see, that from your purpose comes provision. From your purpose comes fulfillment. And it's not just for you, but it's also for someone else. Number three, what Jesus showed them, naturally, that God desires fellowship with man. In John 8, 54, Jesus replied, if I glorify myself, my glory means nothing. And he says, my father, whom you claim as your God, is the one who glorifies me. God wants to be a part of everything that you do. Not just spiritually, but also naturally. So in all your success, give God the glory. Number four, Jesus showed us that God gave man the ability to have dominion and to solve problems. In John 21 and 6, I love this. Jesus told Peter to cast his net on the right side of the boat. And he says, you will find some fish. When Peter did, as Jesus told him, he caught a large number of fish. See, when you solve problems, you change the world. Not only do they change the world, you change a life. And when you solve problems, your stock goes up. Your personal life changes as well. And when you solve problems, people will pursue you. God has created us to move in the natural realm as well. God has created us to move forward and be his sons and daughters in the earth. God has created us to take action and to change this world. God has created us to progress 
and to move forward. If we're not moving forward, then something is wrong in our Christianity. If we are still the same place we are 10 years from now, something is not linking up or not matching up. We should increase spiritually. We should increase mentally. We should increase emotionally and even physically because we are the sons and daughters of God and the earth. So this is what I want you to do. <clears throat> Socially, I want you to get out of your comfort zone and meet new people who can challenge you go to go to the next level in life. Amen. You've been praying for a change? Well, God's telling you, get out and meet some new people. Get to know some people who will take you to another level. It does you no good standing around people who are keeping you on the same level. You need to get around some people who's going to challenge your thinking. When Jesus went to the temple, he got around people that he could challenge and that would also challenge him. And he met them where they were. But he exposed himself. See, people, your exposure sometimes will take you to the next level. Isn't that true? There are some things that I've been exposed to, and because I've been exposed to it, I don't tolerate anything that is less. The reason my mom is like she is and so picky, she's been exposed to another level of things so that when she sees a inkling of dirt, it just throws her universe out of order. See, your exposure in life will take you to another level. Your exposure in life will tell you what is God and what isn't God. Your exposure in life... will set you on a course for higher things in life. Because you were exposed, Bishop, you were able to develop... If you would have stayed in Whitfield, Virginia, I doubt that your mind would have been on the level to even think on this level. God took you out so that he could take you into the promised land. Listen to me, people. God wants to take you out from where you are so that you can get into your promised land. And some of it... You gotta again get out of your comfort zone. You've got to shake off some people that may not like what God is compelling you to do. When I let some of my friends go, it was the best thing that I've ever done in my life. I could have prayed all I wanted. But God was telling me, J.C., let him go, let him go, let him go. I was praying, God, deliver me, God, deliver me. But see, I didn't understand you become your company. And God was saying, let him go, let him go. Yeah. Say, so let him go, let them go, let them go. Whatever's holding you back, let it go. Don't be afraid. Make that move. Amen. 
What else is it that I want you to do? I want you to ask God to reveal to you your gifts and purpose in life. Everyone, you have gifts, you have talents, you have a purpose, and within your purpose is the life of God. Matter of fact, it what sustains and keeps the earth. It keeps us moving, it keeps us flowing. Your talents, your gifts, they need to be released in the earth. Stop sitting on what God breathes in you. Your worst enemy in life is not the devil. The, your worst enemy in life is yourself. Because when you can free yourself up, when the devil comes, when we can free our minds up, the world ain't seen nothing yet. The devil is a lie. You're not two-thirds less a human. You have been created in the image and likeness of God. Satan knew what he was doing, trying to get in your mind to tell you. Because Satan knows on the inner side of us is so much potential. That's the reason that he fights us. He knows that if he can keep us in low-level thinking and low-level living, we can have good church, but we'll never accomplish everything that God has called us to accomplish. I don't know about you, but I want to be able to pay off somebody's debt. I want to be able to help somebody else out. I want to change my community. I want to change my world. Oh, thank you, Jesus Christ. One thing I'm starting to see is that in your purpose comes provision. You know, some reason that I think one reason that we're living paycheck to paycheck, some of us, is because we're really not aligned up with our purpose. Your purpose brings fulfillment. Your purpose gives service to someone else. And I'm going to tell you this: pursuing your purpose, it doesn't come easy. But when you get in it, it's the greatest thing that you can be in in life. You ever seen someone living in their purpose? I don't care if they're saved or unsaved. It's just something about them that you know that they are in their purpose. I don't know about you all. I don't want to die taking what God put on the inside of me to my grave. I want to release everything that he put in me in this earth. I want men to see the good works of God through my life. Oh, praise be to God, praise be to God. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Robert Burns said the purpose of life is a life of purpose. Stop believing everything that people say about you. Stop believing what people say about you. If you believe it long enough, you will become it. But this is where you've got to make up in your mind. I am not what you say about me. I will not become what you said about me. You may not like me, but that doesn't matter. What matters is what God says about me. And God said that I've been created in his image and in his likeness. Our young men have got to start believing in God on the inside of them. They've got to know that they are more than what the world says about them. They've got to know that God has created them to be geniuses. God has created them to create life. Our young women have got to know that God has created them to be beautiful women in the earth. They've got to know that they're not what the world says about them. I am what God says that I am. I am rich. I am blessed. I am walking in the fullness.
presence of God, I am death free. And the days are barely making it. They are over. Let the redeemed say so. Oh, yes. Yes. Devil, you better watch out. Whoa, here he comes. I'm coming, devil, and I want you to know I'm coming. And I'm taking back everything that the devil stole from me. I didn't know what I know now, but what I know now, what I know now, what I know now, It's time for us to rise. It's time for us to rise. It's time for us to soar. It's time for us to rise to the occasion. Hallelujah. God just told me to tell you he's not finished with you yet. Somebody else said it, and you may be thinking it. God said, cast that thought down and know that your best is yet to come. Your days of new beginnings start today. I'm not finished with you yet. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Every day that you wake up, you are a new creature. Every day that you wake up, you are a new creature. Forget your past. Forget what you've done. Yesterday is gone. You can't do anything about yesterday, but you can change your future. Oh, glory to God. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Number four, God's given man the ability to have dominion and to solve problems. God wants us to be problem solvers in the earth. <clears throat> Tony, you know this. They pay millions for people who solve problems. And they pursue you, don't they? I want to challenge everyone to be a creator in the earth. It's your God-given ability. It's the life of God on the inside of you. Start believing God to solve problems in our earth today. Start believing it. Parents, put it in your children. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory. 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 <clears throat> Do you not know the two thirds of promotion? A promotion is motion. Do you not know that? You got to move people. Uh, 
<laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus Christ. You know what? Let's keep it real. My son, you know what? Thank God for technology. My son sent me a, a text. And you know what? Because of technology, uh, uh, this is what he said. He said, uh, uh, there's a quote in the admin building that says, two-thirds of promotion is, two-thirds of promotion is motion. I got you, buddy. You got to move, right? Let's give my hand. Let's give my son a hand. <clears throat> I haven't spoken in so long, I can't even talk right now. <laughs> praise God. It's been a while. But praise God. God is great. Oh, Jesus Christ, I can feel it in the air. There's so much potential in this room. And I believe God's inspired me to release it in you all because you don't know what's on the inside of you. Some of you, you've been sitting on things that God's been wanting to release. And hopefully, I don't, put a, I don't want to put a fire under you. I want to put a fire in you to do something. Whew. All right, I will culminate with this. Why am I preaching this? Because I've been in this thing a long time. And it's hurting my heart to see people believers struggle and go through things in life that other people are enjoying. If anybody is spiritual, it's us. And it hurts my heart to see people suffer to barely make it. It's hurt, it hurts my heart to see us not enjoy the things that God intends for us to enjoy. See, I want you to experience the full life of God, both naturally and spiritually. And I want you to experience the life that Christ came and died for and what he revealed to John. This is what Voltaire says, the next slide. God gave us the gift of life. It is up to us to give ourselves the gift of living well. It's up to you, people. There are some things that you're going to have to do. There are some things you're going to have to put in motion to make happen. And him was life. And his life was the light of man, both naturally and spiritually. Let's pray. God, you said, I've come that you may have life. And God, you've seen us, and you know the people. You know our predicaments. You know where we are. God, you know that some of us are hurting. We've done the best that we can, God. And it seems like we're not making the progress that you said that, you, that Christ came for. God, you know each person here. You know where they are in their personal life or when it comes to relation to the life of God. God, we want to live in your best. And God, we want to be your sons and daughters in the earth. God, we want to bring healing to people. We want to bring deliverance to people. Not just financially, God. We want to bring healing and deliverance to people in their minds and emotionally. And God, we want to save our children. 
We want to save our communities. We want to save our young men and our young women. We want to save our men and our women, God. We want to save the man who's coming out of prison, God. And we want to provide jobs. And God, we want to give people access to education. And God, we want to leave a legacy. And that's what you said we can do. So God, we're asking you to show us, God, where is it that we're missing it? Or God, what is it that we're not doing that will give us the life that again you came for? And yes, God, I pray that you remove the things that's hindered us from getting to the next level. And yes, spiritually, but also naturally. What is it that we're not doing, God? What is it that you're saying to us to take action in? We want your best, God. This message today, I know this is God saying this to you. There are some of you, you're at a crossroad in your life. You need some wisdom from above. You need some wisdom that comes from God concerning your life so that you can experience the life of God. And God says he desires to show you. And as he shows you, you've got to be willing to make the changes and step into your destiny, step into your purpose. If you're that person and you know that right now God's talking with you, I want you to come to the altar, whether you're saved or unsaved. I just want you to come to the altar right now. You're at a crossroad and you need some answers. I want you to come to the altar right now. Yes, you need some answers right now. You're at a crossroad. You're at a specific place in your life when it comes to your health, when it comes to your finances, when it comes to your children, when it comes to whatever it is, you're at a crossroad. Thank you, Jesus. your sons and your daughters. We lift our hands to you, God. And God, yes, you grieve when we hurt. God, you grieve when our needs are not being met. It grieves you, God, when our children suffer. It grieves you when our family suffers. It grieves you, almighty God, when our nation suffers. It grieves you, God, when someone else suffers. So therefore, God, it's your desire that we live and move into the place that's in your image and in your likeness. God, I come before you. These people have come to the altar, God. I pray that you show them, God, your wisdom. What is it that they need to do? What is it that they need to step into to receive your full blessings for them spiritually and yes, naturally as well? What are the things that they need to change? What are the things that they need to pursue? I thank you, almighty God, that you're giving them all things to enjoy. I thank you, almighty God, that you created new life for them and that they're seeing and they're moving into it, God, that they won't be afraid. God, give them the strength that they need to take one step, to put one foot in front of the other. God, give them the strength to see what you have released in them. I thank you, almighty God, that this time next year, every person at this altar, God, will be at a different place. This time next year, God, this time next year, God, someone will be debt free. This time next year, God, 
Someone will be in another level of freedom in their life. This time next year, God, someone will, re will receive their healing. This time before next year, Almighty God, someone will see, a, they will receive another level of deliverance. They will experience another level of your life. And I thank you, Almighty God, that you will expose these people to people who will take them to another level. Thank you, Almighty God. Let's all lift our hands to God. Let's just lift our hands to God and say, God, I receive all that you have for me. Say, God, I give you my life. God, I give you my being. I give you everything so that I can experience your full life. And say, God, help me to know what is you and what is not you. And say, God, give me the strength to jump into it, to step into it, to move into it so that I can live, so that I can live, so that I can live, and so that I can have your life. Say, so I receive it now in Jesus' name. Let's give God a praise. Glory! to receive the offering. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus Christ. We used to sing a song years